Hello and welcome to Cruising with Kenyo. Hello and welcome to Cruising with Kenyo. What's up, guys? It's Kenyo, and welcome to this episode of Cruising with Kenyo. We'll be right back after this sponsored segment. What is up, everybody? Today, I want to talk to you about quantum computing, specifically, you know, Google's so-called quantum computer supremacy. I just saw a, well, not just, I've been seeing lots of stuff, you know, there's all this quantum computer stuff, and I was like, let's really think about these quantum computers, because, one, they're very cool, you know, what is a quantum computer? Let me try to do my best job to explain it, and am I the best to explain this? Uh, yes, for you, right now. And um, so, let, let's go into a quantum computer. Um, basically, if I under, this is what I understand, you know, and I please correct me if I'm wrong, go Google this afterwards, but I think what we'll find is that, you know, you, this is going to be a, a pretty good explanation. So, computers work um, basically by being able to store one of two values of information, and basically, a quantum computer can store, you know, one of a much larger number. So instead of having ones and zeros, you know, you can have lots of stuff in there, you know, um, because you, the, the things can be in lots of different states. And so I'm, you know, one thing I don't completely understand, which I'm sure there is, is I think there's some sort of functional difference in the way that um, quantum computers can work. Um, but I'm going to assume that it's just computing power. So it's like, if the, if you have more bits, then your computing power goes way up. Um, and then also, I feel like it's a way to research quantum technology. Um, I'm not sure if it's all about the computing itself. They're saying that, you know, quantum computers would be able to, um, do a lot of computer processes a lot faster, so... Uh, anything algorithm related, anything that requires processing lots of data. You know, it makes me think, what if you could use a quantum computer to mine Bitcoin? I'm going to Google that, and invariably there's going to be a bunch of weird articles. But anyway, um, so, increased, uh, increased, increased um, computing power to levels that we've never seen before. What are we going to be doing with this? Um... I mean, a lot of stuff, probably. I'm sure it'll help a lot when it comes to AI. I think, though, it's a long way out. I think uh, quantum computers right now, even though Google is claiming supremacy, it looks exactly like, if you look at the pictures, right, they got these big tubes. It looks exactly like what regular, what we call computers today, probably looked like um, in, like, like when they were first getting invented, you know when computers were gigantic and they would take up like whole rooms. Um, I think that's a lot of what where quantum computing is. It's like, yeah, there's usefulness in the data. Just like people were using those computers and they were punching the numbers. You know, they were like, oh, this is so amazing. It could basically do the work of like one really good calculator right now, but not even really good, one average calculator right now, but they were like, they had never had a calculator, right, so, um, you know, that's where the technology was, and right now, we're, we're very, you know, impressed about our own technology, but, you know, in another 50 years, they're gonna be like, uh, yeah, I mean, that was lame, <laughs> you guys were doing what? Um, when it comes to the computers. Now, I think what we always forget about is it's not about the computers, it's about us, our imagination, our ability to live life is the fundamental HD-ness, is the fundamental um, quantum-ness, is the fundamental, you know, just craziness of life. We are the ones doing it. So whether we're using today's technology or technology from a thousand years ago, um, life is always highly engaging, because, you know, at best, we're trying to replicate what our brains are, what our brains are going to do, the best computer available is, is right there in the noggin, now, what computers can do, obviously, is surpass, you know, levels of focus, um, and really, you know, handle huge quantities of data, but anyway, 
not even huge quantities. I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna figure out how to. You know, I remember when, you know, okay, I'm not even gonna talk about floppy disks because I I do remember floppy disks. Um, you know, I had a couple, I remember I had this one game on a floppy disk when I was young. I don't even remember what it was, but I would look for that disk. I just seeing the the graphic on that disk, little floppy disk, would make me happy. But even you know, flash drives when I was in middle school, high school, and those were, you know, they had eight megabyte flash drives, uh, if someone tried to, I think they even had 256 kilobyte flash drives, am I right on that, like 512 kilobyte flash, but either way, if someone tried to walk up to you with an eight megabyte flash drive today, you would, you, you would likely slap them, you're like, what, am I gonna put two mp3s on this, is this your, your word processing storage, what, what is this, <laughs> eight megabyte of, 8 megabytes, if you have any 8 megabyte flash drives, send them to me, anyway, um, but yeah, so, um, computers are going to get way more interesting, I think we're quantum computers right now, whether or not Google's, you know, claiming to have supremacy or not, um, we're very far away from any usefulness, when it comes to quantum computers, I'm just going to be very frank with you. I think what we are taking from it is amazing research of what quantum means. And I think um, along with Bitcoin, we have a lot of very interesting um, technologies coming up that are showing us how things work, you know. Um, and all of these things are building off of some sciences that have been doing it, you know, one one, arguably, I think one of the most mature and like, um, but still a science that has a long way to go is, uh, the science of construction. You know, we do amazing things with houses. Houses are arguably to me more complex, um, than computers are a much larger scale. Um, but computers are also very awesome and we do great stuff with that and cars, motors are amazing. So we have lots of great technologies and, and in combining these, um, we're learning more about the world. So what is quantum computing? Is it the next end all be all stage? No, it's, it's a tiny, it's a tiny, it's a tiny new category. One day somebody invented books and books and books sucked for 3000 years. And I think we're actually still in the sucky stage of most of our technologies where we're getting to some good places with um, some of the more ancient ones, agriculture. We're, hopefully we can figure something else because we're, we're still not very good at that one either. But um, quantum computer, Google supremacy, sure, maybe, if you want to say so. I just wanted to break in the, the quantum topic because I've been thinking about it for a really long time. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about quantum computing and, and um, quantum computers and... Um, also, if you have any really cool resources that you trust, shoot them over to me. Um, and, uh, you know, go comment. You can comment on the YouTube page. That's probably the best place to drop comments. Even unless you want to just e email it to me, Kenyo at Project TV. Um, but, yeah, the YouTube comment section is probably where, you know, we'll make a little, a little community. But, of course... I'm all over the social media, at Kenyo HQ, you know, you're listening to Cruising with Kenyo on the at Kenyo HQ podcast, you can also find me at Kenyo HQ on Instagram, at Kenyo HQ, Facebook, Kenyo HQ, Twitter, at Kenyo HQ on Snapchat, at Kenyo HQ on TikTok, people, I'm using the same handle on many social media platforms, also at Kenyo HQ on Snapchat. So come holla at ya guy and uh we will chat it up. Alright guys. Can yo out. Talk to you later.